Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another large floral card, of course. <laughs> I'm using the Mom's Spring Flowers stamp set again that Simon just released. I love this floral cluster. And I mentioned in my last video using it, how I was thinking about like drippy watercolor and I couldn't get the idea out of my head and I was like, I have to gotta do it you know the idea is there so i am kind of lining it up right now in my misty and i'm using my brutus monroe stick and stamp mat i know this is like sold out everywhere right now i think it's on reserve though so you can order it and then they'll ship it out when it comes back in stock i'm quite liking it because i used it so right now it's holding what is the card front so I have that, I masked off where the score line is, and then I stamped the image with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. This is, with this card, you could almost skip this step. I've done this on other cards. I kind of like the effect of the outline with no coloring. Um, you'll see as I put the card together. So with these sort of sticky mats, because Misty makes them too, I want to get my hands on the Misty ones just to compare. But those are sold out as well. They'll get back in stock eventually. Anyway, um, the easiest way to remove your cardstock though from those is to kind of bend the mat away from the cardstock. And then you're good to go. So the benefit of that was I lined up my watercolor paper panel exactly where the card base had been. So then I'm stamping the flowers in the exact same spot. And my watercolor paper is Canson XL watercolor paper. And technically, I probably could have just left this on here and watercolored it and not taped it down anything because the sticky mat would have held it. But I, after I'm done with my sticky mat, I put the, the plastic back on it and um, put it in its little sleeve like I showed in previous videos because I work in my garage and no matter what, like there's, you know, lint and dust and all those things and it just... It is a constant battle <laughs> and I also didn't want like my hands to be like sticking to the sides of my, you know, I just, I was like, nope. So it was easier to just tape my panel to a hardboard and then I'm using my glass mat as my palette and then I smushed several colors of Simon's positively saturated inks onto it. So I've got cantaloupe, sweets, taffy, limelicious, fairway, cappuccino, and mocha. And I have, I grabbed a couple of the ink pads and I put them under my hardboard to put this on an angle. And then I painted with clean water, the drippies, the kind, you know, coming down from the image. And then I took that same paintbrush and I'm just using the cantaloupe color and the lime licious so my light is green and just at, like picking up the color and touching it to those areas where there's water you can't really see it on the video but in real life I can see where all that water is you know it's shiny I know where it is so I'm just kind of touching those inks to it and they're being you know pulled into the water and it's creating this drippy effect and it's fun honestly Honestly, the more you play with messy watercolor, the more comfortable you get with it. And I genuinely just, I love it. I don't know. It was something I really avoided for a long time back in the day because I just, I was like, how do people do these things? You know, and that, just that bit of OCD and it's like got to stay inside the lines, etc. But the more you play with it, I just, well, you guys know, I love messy watercolor. It's what I love to do. So I did that little, you know, soft drippy effect. I dried this completely with my heat tool because I didn't want all the cars to continue to be pulled into that. Um, I'm still going to go outside the lines, you know, make a big old mess like I do, but dried that with my heat tool. And then I'm going to start painting in and again, not being perfect with it. I'm going to go outside the lines. I also squeezed my um, glitter gloss aqua shimmer pen onto that glass mat. I've shown in a previous video just the other day, I used it to do the actual watercolor painting, but this time I decided just to smush or like squeeze the ink onto it. So there's glitter in there and I'll show at the end of the video. Cause again, you can't really see it the way everything's sitting now, but I only start using it more towards the flower centers. So I started with the greenery. I'm using those two 
greens. I start with the lighter, add the darker. I, you know, go outside the lines a bit. I also you know, highlight the drippy areas a little bit. And then I do the same thing with the florals. So I'm using that cantaloupe ink. I'm just obsessed. There's something about like peachy, orangey, pinky mixes with flowers that I am all over. I love it. I don't know what it is. I just, I love it. <laughs> so I did the cantaloupe and the sweets. And then on the bottom of my mat, which you can't really see, I have the taffy ink, like the darkest pink. And that one I'm mixing with the aqua shimmer, like the clear glitter gloss and a little bit of water to paint that. So it is going to be glittery because who doesn't love glitter? Flowers, florals and glitter meant to be in my opinion. Anyway, did all this painting. I kind of went back and forth and just kept adding more layers to intensify the colors. Um, because just like everything, a lot of times like these dry back a little bit to be a little bit lighter. These inks are interesting. I, I've done so many videos since I started getting them because, you know, Simon's got 45 colors released so far. I have 30, the next 15, um, I'll be getting soon. And people have been asking like, how do these compare? Like, are these like distressings? Honestly, they're not. They're, they're different. And I didn't realize until I think it was Sherry Carroll was saying in a video, these inks do have pigment in them as well, which actually made sense. Once she said that, I was like, that's why I like, I don't know, they behave differently. They're very interesting. They're very water reactive. These colors are very intense. Um, I really like them but I wouldn't compare them to other inks. They're kind of on their own little sphere, in my opinion. So anywho, I kept drawing things here and there. I dried everything before I did the flower centers because I didn't want the brown to just like start spreading into everything. So I used um, cappuccino and mocha for my flower centers. And I actually did a couple layers of those colors. That's why I dried it with my heat tool just to kind of intensify it a little bit more. And then I went in and painted all the little stamens with that mocha. So the darkest brown ink, just kind of tapped that into all the little places. Once I had the flower centers done, um, again, made sure everything was completely dry because of course I'm gonna add splatter. <laughs> <laughs> not only is it going to be messy drippy watercolor but I'm going to add splatter that's just it's just what you do so I've got some white gouache I did pull out my splat box because I plan on doing some pretty heavy splattering so I just stuck my hardboard right in there just to help contain everything and the white gouache stuck that onto my glass mat as well swirl that around with water it looks much more intense at the moment it will absorb a lot of this color so in the end a lot of the splatter is kind of like you know pink here a little peachy in some areas a little bit green so it ends up being a lot more subtle which is I'm totally fine with and I even added more water to that to just get a more softer it ends up just looking just kind of splattery so that will dry back as well and absorb some of the color and then, of course, I took my Perfect Pearl powder, put that on my mat, mixed that with water, and added a bunch of that splatter. So I will also have shimmer splatter. So I got glitter and shimmer and splatter and drippy watercolor and genuinely enjoyed this whole process. It was therapeutic more than anything. So everything is completely dry. I peeled off the tape and then I trimmed this down. I basically took a quarter inch off all four sides. So this ends up being like three and three quarters by five inches. I don't always remember the measurements. And honestly, a lot of times it doesn't really matter. But when I do remember them, I share them. So everything is dry. And I am going to use a sentiment from the CZ Design Spring in My Step stamp set. And I think at the moment this one might be sold out. I think the combo with the wafer dies is on reserve. This one's been super popular as are all CZ design sets. I love this set. I love her mix of fonts. I love the phrases. I had to use it. So anyway, I lined it up. I'd used a piece of vellum because this sentiment was actually still a little bit inky and I didn't want to risk because I'm stamping like right onto this background. But I wanted to stamp directly on this panel because I had actually heat embossed this onto vellum, but even the vellum 
kind of obscured the drippy effect and I didn't want to cover that up. So I stamped this multiple times with the clear embossing ink and then coated it with gold embossing powder. And then that way you still can see everything under it. And it was also with the knowledge, I was like, man, if I mess this up at the very least, I can, you know, stamp it, heat emboss it, die cut it, glue it on top. <laughs> Even though it would have obscured the drippy, but it worked out. So I was very happy. So I did that. And then I took my card base again, put that back in my Misty, masked off where the score line is. And I'm going to stamp that big floral again. I could have done this at the beginning, but sometimes my brain works great when it comes to card making. Not so great with everything else. My brain is still like brain fog and all the issues after being sick. But anyway, um, yeah, this was an afterthought. So I relined up the image and I stamped it with that cantaloupe ink. And then I lined up another sentiment from the spring in my step stamp set. Line that up and I'm going to stamp that with the Nocturne ink. And it's like super intense. <laughs> I kind of thought I was like, ooh, maybe I should have done that, you know, with one of the pink inks or whatever. But I don't know. I actually kind of like it. You'll see at the end, like when you open the card, it's just like in your face. Like you make every day amazing. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I'm like, yes, I like this. I hope the recipient, when they get this, they just like, it just like punches them in the face. Like you are awesome. <laughs> so anywho. I put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of my watercolor panel. Just covered the back of that. I used my little Tim Holtz snips for this foam tape because it's very sticky, but it's also thin, so it's not super bulky. And then I lined this up on the card front, and this is where having the image stamped in black on the card base, it just gives it that little extra something. And I know, I did not add any bling. I just, I couldn't do it. I, there's splatter and glitter and shimmer and I've turned the flashlight on my phone so you guys can see that glitter. I love, love my aqua shimmer pens. They're just, they're so subtle, but then when the light hits them and you see that glitter, it's so pretty. I love it. So that was it. I just paired this card with one of Simon's doll pink envelopes and see what I mean? It's just like in your face, that sentiment. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So paired it with a doll pink envelope and that was the card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below as well as on my blog if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.